Hey guys, welcome back to the Girlfriends and Goals podcast YouTube channel. My name is Samaria and I'm joined by my best friend and co-host Miosha. And today we're reviewing Love is Blind episodes seven through nine. So uh, make sure you subscribe to our channel, give this video a thumbs up and definitely meet us in the comments to talk about these episodes. Yes. All right. Do we want to kick things off with Chelsea and Jimmy? Ooh, one thing Chelsea said, I'm going to exhaust y'all. <laughs> You're exhausted by her? Am I? <laughs> but I'll let you go. <laughs> I mean, so it starts off with the whole, are you mad at me? And then he apologizes to her. So they're still at the honeymoon at the mm -hmm. beginning of these episodes. Um, I put that they seem to be having a lot more fun with each other in this episode. And at first yeah. I wasn't sure why. I think we learn why later mm -hmm. on in the episode, but it just seemed more fun and more relaxed at certain points in this episode. Yes. Uh, I wrote that there was definitely an energy shift. For sure. We know why. Mm -hmm. um, I think in this episode, she asked him, what are you most concerned about as far as returning back to Charlotte, he said that he has none. He, he, Jimmy be lying. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Jimmy is a liar. How he said he has no concerns. concerns. Anyway. Mm. So yeah, their yeah. beginning scene wasn't much, and then it went to Kenneth and Brittany. Yes. Ah. Okay, so Kenneth tells Brittany about the conversation that he and AD had and got her reactions to it what which I, before you go too deep i want to no. know how do you feel about him telling britney about that conversation i don't think it was necessary but i did appreciate how britney handled it mm. i did okay you seem to have other opinions so <laughs> i didn't mind him telling her okay. uh so to get into more specifics she says, you know, I appreciate the questions. I hope that it's coming from pure intent. Mm -hmm. But she seemed a little agitated by it. Like, why is she adding something to a situation maybe unnecessarily? And I wrote, because he says, oh, well, it seemed well-rounded. It didn't have any malicious intent. Yeah. I wrote that I think he felt a way about her reaction to it. Really? In the mm -hmm. moment, I did not think so. Knowing I think he felt I, away. Knowing what I know now, maybe, but in the moment, I definitely didn't think so. So I appreciated how she handled it because I understand her saying, I don't want anybody having bad intentions toward us saying stuff. So she left space for if there are bad intentions, then I'm less likely to want to listen to that. However, mm -hmm. she also left space for okay, this is a Black woman who knows about Black people's business. And so there's some value to what she's saying. So I don't think she dismissed what AD was saying. I think, you know, she she, she had to, I don't want to say defend herself, but I think she wanted to position herself so that he knows, hey, this is also something I have considered. And I understand, like, you're not surprising me with the idea that, I could possibly be raising black kids. So that's something I've considered and it's something that I feel prepared for. At the same time, her thoughts are valid because she lives in a space that I can never understand. Yeah, I think he felt a way. Uh, one, she kept saying uh, how you identify or I identify or what was the other thing <laughs> she said? That. Who, who to the eye looks like me? Okay, Brittany, <laughs> I don't, <laughs> okay, we just go leave that there. Uh, she says that it wasn't her first rodeo, I guess, in terms of being with Black men. So she has experience dating Black men, mm -hmm. but then he quickly lets her know like, hey, well, AD isn't going to be the only one, just so you know, this right. is the first experience for me. So there may be more of this to come. So I don't know, maybe I'm reading too much into it, but I don't think he cared for, not that he was mad about it, mm -hmm. but I don't think he cared for her response to it. Do you think AD bringing that up to him sobered him a little bit? Do you think he was in a little bit of la-la land 
Mm. And then realize once AD had that conversation with him, oh man, I do need to think about it. I do need to prepare her for it because I have a female best friend who's going to pull me to the side and be questioning mm-hmm. me about things and she might question you about things. So do you think the way this conversation went was partially AD's fault for bringing that up? I think it was a combination of things. I okay. think her bringing it to his attention, I think contributed. I think mm-hmm. her response to what AD said contributed because say if it was his mom or his cousin and they had the Mm. same response would she feel the same and come with that same type of energy um I also think some of the identify as I think Mm -hmm. her saying like oh well I have all this experience dating black men because up until this point um we hadn't heard that this was a, uh, only a new experience for, well, no, yeah. we did hear it was a new experience for him, but we didn't hear on her side, I don't yeah. think. So I think it was a combination of a lot of things. Um, and I mentioned in the last recap that I did not sense romantic vibes mm-hmm. from him to her. Hmm. So it could have been that maybe he was already sensing it. And then all of these things added on to like, oh, I'm I'm not interested in this experience. Yeah. With her. I will say, and maybe I am being a little bit easier on Brittany because I do like her, right? She yeah, yeah, yeah. We like her, yeah. But also, I remember season one when Lauren's dad brought up, hey, you know, this is a Black woman. There could potentially be Black children. You're going to have to navigate this world in a different way than you would navigate it with a white woman. And Cameron's response was, oh, you know, I've dated outside of my race before. So I don't necessarily think Brittany talking about her previous dating experiences was her trying to say she's an expert but no. maybe just her saying I've thought about these things before of course you can think about things and then reality mm-hmm. could be completely different right but maybe yeah. just her saying hey I'm not as naive as maybe I present to be mm, yeah because she has experience either way yeah. I think it was a combination of a lot of things and I don't think it was all on what ad said and i I appreciated her question she said what would make you feel confident in us being good like what equals good for you and i think that's a question that a lot of dating people need to ask each other because Mm -hmm. you can be perfect but if your perfection isn't what the other person has in mind it's no good so i appreciated that question i don't know that he fully answered it no he said he uh he said good question (laughs) (laughs) So I I wish he would have given her more feedback. Um, And then we have them on this boat thing. Now, I know you're going to say it's because he he never liked her. He doesn't like her. No, actually, I wasn't. Okay. I can can say my response first. Surprise me. So I don't know, maybe because if I'm in a situation where I'm on vacation, I'm relaxing, Mm -hmm. I don't feel the need to fill all the space. I want to enjoy the scenery, the vibe, have my drink. I'm on vacation. I'm relaxing. So I think I, while he did seem uninterested, he seemed more interested in the dolphins. Oh, look. What's those dolphins showed up? He was chatting. But, But for me... I'm not always in the mood to be chatting, chatting, chatting. Oh, we're on a boat, yacht, we're on the beach. I just want to relax. I may want to read a book, listen to a podcast. So I was okay with the silence, honestly. (laughs) So one of the signs that I'm comfortable with somebody is if we could just be quiet in each other's presence. I love that. And so I didn't see a problem with it. It seemed like the camera people, the producers, the editors, we're making it more awkward than it actually was. And it Mm -hmm. seemed like Brittany would have preferred that he were talking during that time too. Oh yeah, I agree. Especially given the conversation when they moved to the front Mm -hmm. of the boat Mm -hmm. and they start to talk about physical physical touch and her love language, essentially. Um, She basically says, "I I would be okay with more from you. He's like, oh, I've been told I'm overly affectionate. Now, Kenneth, 
<laughs> we know you have not been overly affectionate with this woman. We could see that. You might have been told that in situations in the past where you were being overly affectionate, but you know, good and well. Ain't no now, could you imagine what she was feeling in that moment? Oh yeah, I, I <laughs> <laughs> I'm always affectionate, really, because you ain't touched me. Or even with the dolphins, she was like, can we always have the dolphins around? And I thought that was really funny because he lit up in ways that maybe she would expect him to light up just because she's around or because she's talking to him. But yeah, uh, she, she's communicating her needs. And I don't know that he cares much to fulfill them at this No, point. even when she laid down to try to get closer to him, it still felt awkward he seemed like okay well fine if you want to that was the vibe I was getting yeah and what did she say I feel like I don't know if you're into me and I agree I've been saying it for the last few episodes you have you you did pick up on that quite early yeah (laughs) uh okay and then I think the last thing that happened in their scenes was that they're both very neat and she's happy about it all right wait are, are we skipping the part where they go back home? Okay. I thought maybe we should do the meetup before that. Cause they, Oh, you want to do the meetup before that? Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, okay. hold up now. <laughs> I know. Just so we're going to like order it. Yeah, yeah. You know? All right. So okay. next I have Johnny and Ava who I'm telling you. I Ava, like, Amy. Amy. <laughs> Johnny and Amy. Girl. But. Ooh. It's I cause they're like, the sleepy couple. Yeah, it's like they make cameos. Yeah, which we have to have a bit of a break, so. That's true. Maybe things are just, for the most part, healthy with them. But in this episode, they went horseback riding. Mm -hmm. And she talked about how she's falling more and more for him every day. She complimented his eyes. Remember, she wasn't Mm -hmm. used to his looks initially. So I think she is getting more into him. Uh, And, of course, he's he's been into her, child. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she That's said it feels like she's been with him for years. Her love is growing more and more. Yeah. Not too much on them. Uh, she did say that her parents have been more involved in her relationships in the past. Yeah. Which she's what, 20? Five or six. Yeah. So she, I don't know. <laughs> I can see that for past relationships, but she is going to have to stand 10 toes down if Johnny is who she's deciding to settle down with. She's going to have to make a hard shift especially with this process happening so quickly, she'll have to grow up really fast. Something that she said after that about having her dad's blessing and not knowing if she could move forward without it. Um, yeah. One, why why are you on this show if yeah, your yeah. dad's blessing is the ultimate you know, stamp of approval on if you're going to move forward? It somewhat made me feel, Amy, are you giving yourself and out out just in case okay that's not messy you know which hey if she's being strategic in that way uh I didn't feel that way I I think that might have happened after the meetup but I didn't feel that way about I didn't think she was being strategic I thought she was really preparing herself and him for it like there's gonna be opposition yeah she kept saying oh this isn't a traditional process you know my yeah but do that so again i i am going to be expecting a lot from her mm. if this is the process that she selected and that she needs yeah. to go through with she has yeah. to like man up mm-hmm. yeah i agree so uh clay and ad clay is way too obsessed with this ring for me and i don't know i i haven't seen it up close enough like maybe i haven't paid it much enough attention mm-hmm. to it but it's just a regular ring to me like I don't think it's that I don't think it's anything super special but that's just me it's iconic uh, but he's obsessed with it <laughs> this yeah. scene had me so tickled where they were sitting out there in the it wasn't gazebo, a, a gazebo maybe yeah mm-hmm. looking over the water here I don't know what would you call yeah it? Mm. so but I do like a positive about Clay, which I don't know if you saw this comment, but somebody on the last video was like, um, you you guys need to give black men a little grace. And it's like, I feel like we look for every 
we every we be scraping trying every opportunity mm -hmm. to compliment these men not because they're black but just because sometimes yeah sometimes compliments sometimes. are warranted mm -hmm. but anyway i like that he uses everything as an opportunity to ask questions about her so he's mm -hmm. looking out at the water he says i like water do you like the beaches are you a beach girl mm -hmm. and then she starts to talk about herself so even if it is just a friendship type thing he does take interest in what does she like in this mm -hmm. episode? And I appreciate that about him. Also in their scene, I think it was before the food came, and maybe this is the production, there were these moments of them just looking out, enjoying the scenery. Mm -hmm. There was a bit of silence there. So I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that was a note that they wrote down and said, focus on that. But maybe. it makes sense if you're on vacation. Mm -hmm to have to, to enjoy the water in the scene, mm -hmm. uh, in the scenery. So he talks about how his dad is going to love her, uh, which I thought was really sweet. You know, mm -hmm. I'm saying, I think my family's going to take a liking to you. I laughed at him dancing when the food came because that is so me. That is so relatable. <laughs> However, we might need a few, a few table manners. We need an etiquette class for my boy clay because the way he was eating that shrimp and whatever it was it cabbage i don't know yeah it was soup the, the soup mm -hmm. i just <laughs> which one <laughs> soup and it's hot as i don't know what else right but he was really he really wanted that soup that was one of the first things he said when he mm -hmm. sat down that he wanted the soup but yeah the table manners it's like they weren't there and then they showed up later in a really crazy way <laughs> so yeah maybe he was hungry I'm not sure the I look on her face though yeah I was like okay like she literally laughed at him <laughs> maybe that's a pet peeve of hers I know some people it really is an ick for them mm -hmm. to hear people eating slurping and it was smacking wasn't he it was oh probably good God. and then mm. <laughs> and then when he decided to pack up the dishes and she her whole face was like what like what? And she was just like, her eyes were darting back and forth. Like, what is, what is happening? And I thought it was sweet that he did that. I mm -hmm. guess, you know, you would do that at a restaurant to make mm -hmm. it easier for the wait, the waiting staff, mm -hmm. whatever. So I thought it was sweet that he did that. Obviously he didn't have to. So and he did it to detail, like yeah. <laughs> he moved the food and everything. I get it. I'm that same way. If I'm at a restaurant, I don't mm -hmm. like them like leaning all over me to, especially after the Rona. Give me six feet. If we can put things closer to where you can just easily <laughs> grab it off the table and go. Yeah. So I wasn't bothered by it only if maybe I was still eating. Right. So I was wondering. So yeah. she still wanted it. She said, oh, oh, I'm not done yet. But it looked like she was done. Just annoyed by them tidying up. I don't know that she was annoyed. I think she was just confused. Like, I don't know that mm. I've ever seen anybody do it that quickly and in that. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, It was yeah. just very. Usually you just stack the plates or move them to the edge. It's like you have not to clean them. He does this all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but I will say if there were things that irritated her, AD is the type of person, it seems, who doesn't just say it when it comes to mind. So she doesn't say, what are you doing? Or that's irritating or whatever. It seems like she saves that type of feedback maybe until they're alone or doesn't bring mm. it up at all. Maybe she's choosing her battles. But I did make note of that because he was doing some bizarre things. Maybe not bizarre, but he was doing some things that she could have commented on and she just opted not to. So mm. she shows a lot of restraint, I think. Yeah, well, in that moment, I think it was after he cleaned up. Mm -hmm. I think she asked, so what are you thinking? He goes into this whole thing about not wanting to let her down. And as it's soon all as someone says that in my head, they're going to let you down. It's all hitting him. He's overwhelmed. She's like, where's all this coming from? Mm -hmm. He just seemed, I don't know. I like this random anxiety just hit him out of nowhere. Which can happen. Yeah. I I just felt like, it, it doesn't it doesn't feel like a good sign it feels like I'm preparing you for what I've always done and I don't want to do that to you but should I do it at least you're prepared That's yeah it felt that way to me but it's a feeling it's not a fact and I wrote down you know well one I think 
he seems that he's not confident in himself that he can do this. So that wouldn't give her a good feeling. Yeah. But then also, what is his dating history? I would like to know. Because we have his dad's heard. dating history. I know he's spilling all the tea on his parents, which I have more to say about that later. But what is his dating history? Has he had a serious long-term relationship? I don't know if we've heard much about hers. Mm-hmm. So that's what I wrote. Like, hmm, what have you had at least one serious relationship of a year where you've been faithful yeah Mm. I think the stuff he brought up about the divorce is very valid though and that's why he should see a therapist because he might not realize how the divorce that he knows how it takes a toll on family right he brought that up and said I know what it's like to be impacted by divorce as a child of divorce Mm -hmm. but maybe he's not realizing how his dad's cheating and how the divorce turned him into who he is as a dater. And I just, I really want for this man to get therapy. I don't know that his relationship with AD is the healthiest thing right now, but Mm -hmm. I feel like there's hope for him down the line. Like he's 30. So 35 year old Clay having had therapy, I have hope for. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, what have you been up to Clay in your twenties? (laughs) <laughs> that's what I want to know <laughs> all right so before we get to the meetup um Laura and Jeremy had the scene where they talked about the night before and she had the audacity to say well Jeremy iced me out and I had no idea what was going on Laura I, all of America knows what was going on Laura how do you not know no accountability and then took it a step further to say she was triggered (laughs) the whole victim yes oh my goodness and to be fair I don't think Jeremy should have iced her out like you can't have a conversation when you guys are trying to learn about each other and and so I could understand how she felt a way about it but come on Laura you know why he's mad at you and he's right to be mad at you and to be fair if I were him and saw how she didn't apologize for her part in it last night. There was no accountability. I don't really know. Okay, it's the end of the night. What else is there to say? She's not going to take accountability. Still hasn't taken accountability. And then goes on to reprimand him, uh, saying like, oh, if I joke, don't repeat it. Basically giving him direction on what his behavior needs to be in the future and not address you telling weird jokes like I'm, I'm still gonna say stuff like this you just need to know how to handle it outside of our conversations instead of maybe I shouldn't say stuff like that maybe that was a dumb thing to do or say and I should not do that in the future yeah y'all are still strangers you don't know him he doesn't know you mm-hmm. Laura it's, it's not looking good girl as far as cast members, she's one of my least favorites. It's like, it's between her and Chelsea, for sure. <laughs> it's like her and Chelsea, and then obviously AD and and Brittany, as far as the women go, AD and, and Brittany for me are towards the top. Mm-hmm. Amy's Amy. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So they have this meetup. We find out that Chelsea, AD, and Laura are all sleeping with their men good for them but -hmm. there are some discussions that happen so we have first laura's conversation with johnny where she assumes that they're sleeping together she's like yeah i already know y'all are sleeping together how you know and why is that your business maybe the producers put them up to it but she also yeah and i could even when she was sitting with him i was like who set this scene up (laughs) because it doesn't seem like those two would talk to each other outside of Mm -mm being forced to me yeah. he basically told her no i'm not ready for a baby and that's that well, what did you feel about him being like yeah i just thought everybody was on birth control i i think it I speaks thought... to his age his age mm-hmm. and his but... experience yeah maybe i i think it just it speaks to him being a man <laughs> like, oh yeah a man and but... a young man but to assume that everybody is just like for that to be your um your baseline oh everybody is probably on birth control well I don't know maybe I'm being naive if I'm in my early 20s and that's the experience I have and 
the women I've been with have been on birth control mm -hmm. and I've been active. That's the experience he has. I mean, a lot of women are, a lot of women aren't, but I don't, they haven't gone into, okay, like he's not that old. So how many people has he dated? And he's that's like not 26. Yeah. I don't, I, like I said, I, I don't know his experience enough to. I understand. So mm -hmm. women he's dated have been on birth control, but I also feel like it, it shows a gap between like what men and women oh, yeah. are taught about. Um, oh yeah. The level of responsibility definitely is geared more towards on women. I think like, of course he could assume that because, um, but it's like, I can make the assumption most people would use protection. Well, they don't. <laughs> I don't know. It rubbed me, it rubbed me a, a certain type of way. Like, oh, he doesn't even have to be concerned about that. Like at all. Oh, as oh okay. Man. And so of course he can assume those things because he feels like, oh, I've, I've never, I've never even been in the role where I've had to assume that responsibility or have these types of conversation. And it rubbed me the wrong way here just a little bit, but then definitely in the- On the end, oh, other okay. Episodes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, AD and Jeremy talk. Mm -hmm. He apologizes. About, you know, he apologized for the bean dip. And then he talks about Clay being very introspective. Mm-hmm. I thought that was helpful, no? <laughs> it, it was, I mean, AD said it was exactly what she needed to hear. Yes. I don't know. AD's energy seemed a bit more reserved this episode. Really? Overall, yeah. Okay. Mm. Well, she did say that thing with um, what's his name? Jimmy. She's like, I'm glad talking about my body. Oh, yeah. Maybe that oh, threw her know. off a little bit. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. She seemed a bit more pulled back. Not her full bubbly normal self. So yeah. I said Chelsea and um, Jimmy were definitely putting on a little too much when they got with the group. They were being extremely touchy feely, and I don't know. They're they're here for the looks of things. Uh, and then the last talk we had at the meetup was Amy and Jeremy. Okay. This yes. I wanted to say one thing. I think it was Jimmy who said that their relationship was doing the best, as well as I think J Jeremy said it about his relationship. I said, there's a few couples in here that think that this is a competition of who's going to present the best. Stop. Absolutely, but definitely Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Jeremy and Amy have a talk. So she talks to him about the dad being supportive. This also seemed like an odd pairing to mm -hmm. sit down and talk. And then Jeremy talked more about his process, why he picked Laura over Sarah Ann, and then he says, I still want to meet Sarah Ann, though, and be friends with her. Why? Exactly. I don't understand. And I appreciated him when he cut things off in the pods because I felt like he was very direct. Mm -hmm. If you're going to make a decision, make that decision and stand on it. Stop going back. That's I hate. I think that's such a sign of immaturity when you keep going back and forth and you can't stand in the decisions that you made that was definitely on purpose he's keeping the door open yeah so. <laughs> amy was like i'm just gonna keep my mouth closed because she knows better mm -hmm. yeah yeah it, it's okay. not a good look hmm. all right and then so after they leave the meetup uh jimmy and chelsea talked about their favorite and least favorite parts about the um the vacation mm -hmm. um yeah, he was initiating mm. kisses. He was showing all his teeth when he was with her. So whatever went down with them. He, he must have liked satisfied. it. Yeah, he seemed satisfied. Mm -hmm. um, and then we've already mentioned this, but Amy and Johnny, they they talked about having like a great comfort level with each other. And then that's when she talked about her parents being very mm -hmm. involved and not wanting to um, <laughs> move on. I said, well, girl, you better come up with a strategy and real quick because you're about to go back home. I know. Um, okay. And then we have Jeremy and Laura. Laura tells him to pack a Henley or wear a Henley. Even mm -hmm. if he usually wears a hoodie. And uh, they started unpacking what their pet peeves are. I'm not surprised that she had more. Laura seems very, I, I need to have control over everything. Mm -hmm. She's a lot. She is a lot. She's a mm -hmm. lot. Uh, okay. 
And so they get back home and Kenneth and Brittany, what are your thoughts about them when they get back home? So they get in, they start talking about dinner, who's going to cook. Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh yeah, we can eat in. We definitely have to cook the first night. I think he mentions or she mentions chicken. Mm -hmm. And he's like, yeah, we should enjoy the first night. He basically says, I'm not going to cook. And I said, Brittany, see, this is why you shouldn't have let with all this traditional talk. Because she's like, why does why is it me who has to cook? Why can't we both cook? You can't, or you can't cook. You can't help. <laughs> I don't care how traditional you are. Don't you let them know. <laughs> you can show <laughs> it. Let it be a surprise to them. <laughs> now you tired from traveling and you got to get in that kitchen and cook. Okay. But... So the difference between them, she starts packing immediately or unpacking okay. immediately. She's on top of things. What drawer do you want? What side of the closet? And Kenneth- and Where he at? He is in that phone, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, I, I said, to be fair, he said that he had a presentation that coming Monday, I don't know what day this was, but he had a presentation that Monday. So he was prepping for that. Oh, also, on your phone, not your laptop? Also, the people are there filming. Like, he needs to be able to find a balance between... Not even on your iPad. Your phone? I I, I do a lot of my stuff on my phone, too. So Okay, I, okay. All right, fine. <laughs> okay. Like, I write some of my papers on my phone uh, just because it's... And I feel like my brain works better and I can get more out when I'm on the phone. And when okay. I sit at the computer, I'm just like... Okay, say? okay, okay. We'll Ken, we'll give you this one. Fine. That's about all we're gonna give him. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I said maybe he's introverted, so a lot of talking doesn't do it for him. Because I know that I personally enjoy the silence, but I felt like he needed to find a good balance between okay, this is filming time, this is quality time with my soon-to-be wife, and this is phone time. Like you have to set those boundaries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's clearly bothering her. I don't know how he couldn't read the room. It's because he didn't care. Right. Uh, but yeah. It's... Okay. Uh, yeah. Then the episode ends, I believe, with AD and Clay. Mm -hmm. So they talk about how they told their families. I think they're chilling on the couch or something. Mm -hmm. at this point. Uh, his mom is excited. Her people, they're like, okay, well, we want to meet him before mm -hmm. we decide. Completely understandable. Um. So he talks more about seeing cheating as a regular thing and not having seen a black relationship where a man doesn't cheat. I thought that was very sad. It is. And what took it to the next level was the dad taking him on the cheating trips, mm -hmm. the infidelity trips. And what makes it even crazier is you tell your mom this via national television. That's what I kept thinking. I'm like, we find out about it the same time his mom finds out about it. And then we meet the mom later and see how sweet she is. I was so hurt for her. I said, I'm so sorry, auntie. <laughs> he, he had better had a conversation with her before this before aired. It aired. Oh my gosh. Yeah, <laughs> that was all I could keep thinking about was you've never told your mom, but we're hearing about it. Terrible. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, he's just trying to be vulnerable with his new boo and the cameras are just there. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think in a few years, he could be a good husband, but not in 21 days, which is the time I think that they have between the pod mm -hmm. and the, the wedding. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, as he, of this episode. When he talks about there's demons that he fights with and he just wants her to know it, if she wasn't running before, she better get her track shoes on. And you I thought this process was going to help you heal that the man needs therapy and quick and now it's all on her. it's gonna all be on her to be understanding forgiving no she coach, needs to guide her. you the only thing she needs to do is listen to what he's saying and make the right choices i think they should have a nice little conversation before the altar where they both decide we know this is not going to work as a marriage right now i like you you like me we can date i think they just need to have a sweet conversation before the altar, get to the altar, both say no, and see how things work out outside of it. Yeah, I don't know why he took the jump from, oh, I'm single, I'm out here in these streets, to, oh, 
I'm married in a few weeks. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm -hmm. That's all I have for episode seven. Did you have more? Mm -hmm. No, that's it. On to episode eight. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we start off with Chelsea and Jimmy again. They are seeing each other's places. Mm -hmm. Girl, that every time Chelsea (laughs) runs, I'm just like, please. Someone played the clip of her running to meet him when they did the review and they were like, but why is she breathing like that? <laughs> like, it's so, it is I mean, like, she did have a mic on. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying. Sure, it's the mic. <laughs> uh, so her roommate comes and she is like, she's Brittany times two. She is bubbly. What did she bake for them? <laughs> I don't even know. I just know she bought them champagne. Champagne. Or- Champagne yeah. or something, the way that she said yeah. it. Jimmy, Jimmy said immediately, no. He said her roommate is a lot. I could never be Mm-mm. with her at that place with that roommate. He was not feeling the roommate. Mm-mm. He was polite to her, but that mm-hmm. was that. Um, and then they went to Jimmy's place, which you know was more spacious yeah, than she nice. was. I like I kind of like the idea of laundry being in the closet. Oh, <laughs> very convenient. The yeah. his studio was a very nice setup. It was. Yeah, especially just for him. Now, I don't know about her living there unless she, because she's a flight attendant. So I guess she she could be gone for long periods of time. But when she's there, it would be tight. Yeah. So. All right. And then we go on to meet some of Chelsea's friends. So they came over to get all the details. Mm -hmm. Um, She starts off by saying everyone was interested in him. I don't know what here Here we go exaggerating again. See, Chelsea, you got a little exaggerating problem. <laughs> Both of them do. They, they're a match made. Not Maybe enough. that's why they click because they love putting 20 on 10. They love exaggerating. <laughs> they love it. That's how they bond. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And then she talks about how Trey, Trey, Trevor was her number one. But she never said why she went with Jimmy. Yes. She never said. He never said. Mm-mm. So and, Jimmy doesn't know what, doesn't look like what she thought he would. And instead of just admitting that, she's been hyping him. Like, oh yeah, he looks great. Anyway, um, <laughs> I said, no wonder she's talking about Trevor because then she reveals to her friends that Jimmy isn't being physically affectionate with her. He hadn't kissed her that day. What? I'm I'm going to make a note. Well, I have one question. Okay. Is this, this is all within the same day on this episode, right? Yes. The friends coming and then them having that blowout fight at the end. So when he refers later, I'm sorry, I'm jumping, but it's important. When he's like, oh, you were basically the one who initiated sex. He was referring to this day. Yes, I thought so. And I don't know what the timing was. Maybe it was after the friends left, she initiated or before, like when he was mm-hmm. on the clock. Because I, I was I was confused because I'm like, okay, if he was at work, yeah. the friends came over. You're like, he hasn't kissed or touched me all day. It's such I, a problem. I too want a timeline. Yeah. And then, but then you initiated sex that he was like, eh, I could take or leave. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry to jump ahead, but- Something's not adding up here. With her story or his? With her. Hmm. Like being in her feelings about the lack of affection. Mm-hmm. And how and, and even he was like, well, I technically I did kiss you. You know, he spent the whole episode trying to remind her that I have been being affectionate. So I don't I don't know. I don't know what to think or believe with these two. I don't care for either of them, but I ha- I did pick a side in that argument. I felt like I was on uh Chelsea side I think Jimmy is expecting her to be okay with the bare minimum that he wants to give you guys let us know do you feel like okay Chelsea's doing too much because the man gotta work and then the friends and I'm on Jimmy's side okay and I I, because I could understand you've been away for weeks you came back you're finally in the routine of things. She's a flight attendant and not working. So she has all day to do whatever. Mm-hmm. You're back in the zone. Even when he came downstairs, he made some random comment about 
being excited that his boss was like, oh, you're irreplaceable. Mm -hmm. I guess referring to the fact of, oh, you've been gone. Thank God you're back. So yeah. he's back in the work zone. Okay. And so I'm not saying that it may not, I'm not saying that to fully excuse him, okay. but I think she's overly sensitive and very insecure. And I think there has to be this level of understanding. Okay, it's Monday morning. The relaxing vibe of the weekend is over. We're kind of back to the grind a bit. Okay. And now that he's off of work, he seems to be relaxed, entertaining her and her friends. I don't know. I just, I get, I, I think I'm just tired of her whining. So I am too. No, I agree. I agree with, with her whining too much. And I also think the fact that he saw Jessica's picture has her spinning her wheels. But, but yeah. I'm not surprised that Jimmy came from work and was down to hang out with her friends because he loves to show out in front of people. So okay. that didn't surprise me. I, I would not be surprised if he gave all that energy in front of her friends because he likes to keep up appearances, but on a one-on-one -on -one thing, he's not really making, showing any signs that he's interested in her. And I then why is she initiating sex? And I, I bet when he saw <laughs> Jessica's picture, it did change things for him a bit. She's probably initiating sex because he he's not doing it. Or I think later on in a in a like a, a later episode or the next episode, she said something like he he talked about wanting someone to initiate and wanting something, wanting someone to give him those things. So um just to circle back really quick, when the friends are asked asking what was the number reason why you picked Chelsea, mm -hmm. he didn't really even answer. He bought up Jessica basically saying, Oh, it, it came down to y'all too when I had a bad day with her. <laughs> not, to, not to bring up somebody else. No, it's okay. Girl, you know it's not okay with you after he saw. And I put down before I knew who. I said, who showed him Jessica's picture? Like, who would do that? <laughs> somebody who messy. Um, and then <laughs> she brings up the whole Megan Fox and Carrie Underwood. Sorry, can I say something before we yeah. get there? So yeah, back to the, oh, I had a bad day. Pretty oh. much he said, well, she picked me up after somebody made me feel oh. like crap. Like she, she was- She's a cleanup woman. Exactly. Mm -hmm. oh, that's all I wanted to add. <laughs> yeah. the, so who, who do I always get told? <laughs> <laughs> do it again, Samaria. <laughs> I can't do it again. But I want everybody who told her she looked like Carrie Wall. Carrie Underwood to get sent to prison. You do not belong. Look, you don't deserve freedom. What to Carrie Underwood? At that this point, Fox. Megan Fox need to be on payroll for Love is Blind. She does. And Carrie Underwood is next. Absolutely. And Girl, the friends seemed like they were confused. Like they said Carrie Underwood first. And then they're like, uh. And she's like, Megan Fox. Megan <laughs> Fox. You know what I think it is? Her friends haven't witnessed anybody telling telling her that she looks like Megan Fox. She's probably come and told them, oh, someone said I look like Megan Fox. That's why they were so confused. And then she goes back to the dark hair, the light eyes. Um... Like, girl, let it go. The fact that she keeps bringing this up and keeps like, this is the hill she wants to die on. I'm like, sis, come on. Mm -mm. then she later on says that he seems seemed uninterested uh I, jimmy yeah. scares me miosha he's just he's the type of person who will put on a good show when his relationship is in shambles he's constantly aware unaware of her feelings and like when the friends came he thought things were fine but the whole time she was feeling rejected now, don't get me wrong. I do think she's overly sensitive. I do think she's insecure, especially now that he's seen Jessica's picture. And I think maybe she needs way more reassurance than he can even give her because he's not that interested in her. I just, he he rubs me the wrong way. So does she, but. Yeah. Yeah, he tells her that she's clingy. She says it's rude. Because why she's... would you say that? You, do you remember him calling her? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know I'm I think I'm just over her so even though I don't care for him I don't I don't care for either one of these I think people. we're in the same place except you see it more for him than her and I see it more for her than him. I think even if I think the problem is that 
she started off on the Megan Fox thing. <laughs> so her insecurity is at an all time high. Jessica keeps being bought up and they're also trying to save face. So it's like, even if he was showing all her, the love, affection, attention, I don't even know if she'd be receptive to it or open to it. Cause I think she's in her head about it as well. I think two things are true at the same time. I think he's a goofball, mm -hmm. but I think her insecurities are so high mm -hmm. that I don't know. I think she's always going to feel a way like, oh, did he feel like he left something on the table with yeah. Jessica? So she I don't know that he could really make this right because she can't undo the look on his face at the reveal. But honestly, Miosha, I feel like it's one of those things where she knows he's not as into her and that yeah. adds to it. But if, if you know that, then girl, this all this whining, I keep... <laughs> it is a lot of whining. I She... I, I see your point with even if he tried, would she accept it? Because she said something like, even when you tell me you love me, I don't feel like you do. I, I just feel And like she seems to be okay with putting up a bit a bit of a front too. So uh, she's not she's with her just, friends. But yeah, not with her friends, but to the other, you know, cast members. Yeah. Um, and then she even said, Oh, you've been looking for a fight ever since you saw that picture of Jess. Okay, and this is where it's like, we would need to know the timeline. How many days have passed? Is all of this happening in one day? She said yeah. yesterday he looked Oh, yesterday? Him. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> she feels like she keeps throwing herself at him and he's not, he's not throwing it back at her. But he keeps coming back to this thing of, well, I propose to you because I'm invested. And it's almost like he thinks the proposal is enough. Like he doesn't have to show up the next day and the next day and the next day for the relationship because he proposed and that should show you more than enough that I'm interested in you. Mm -hmm. But that's not how it works, especially when you guys have just met each other. Also, mm -hmm. him talking about, well, I bit my lip and so I oh, can't yeah. really talk. <laughs> but you've been, you've been giving her paragraphs about her being clingy. And your the lip sex wasn't hurting you, you then. The sex you could take or leave. And why would you say that? <laughs> He's a goofball. He is. I wouldn't even call her clingy. As clingy as she is, I wouldn't say it to her face if I were her partner. <laughs> Especially if you ever expect to get. And so he says, I've told you I love you more than any of the other guys. Why does it matter? And then she'll get it. She even said it to her, her friends. Oh, he's the best communicator. Where, girl? When? Oh, my Lord. Okay. Okay, so I think he needs to do a better job at listening to what her needs are and loving her the way she wants to be loved. Um, mm -hmm. I also hate that asking for affection has now been deemed as clingy because I I just don't feel affection from him watching him on my TV screen. So I can understand maybe where she's coming from. Uh, even her saying, you haven't kissed me once today. He's like, I've kissed you twice. And it's still not enough. Like, what do you mean? I kissed you twice. I just, I don't know. I, I, I hate to be team Chelsea, so I'm not going to say that I am, but. It, it I just think, felt just. I think he wants different. her to accept bare minimum. I think it felt draining to be in this back and forth of, well, you only kissed me twice. Well, I kissed you here. I kissed you there. It's like y'all let it go <laughs> <laughs> you know it part of me is thinking if this is a typical work day you give them a kiss you see them off to work mm -hmm. get off work give them a kiss when they get home fair but it's a, I... it's a work day okay okay he's working from home and it's a work day and it's his you know how many emails you he probably had <laughs> from the way that i'm picturing it they've seen each other multiple times throughout the day. So he is working from home, but say he mm. comes to the kitchen for lunch or for some water or whatever. I'm not saying he has to kiss her every time, but she probably feels like, oh, he's not even like acknowledging me. Mm. There's no attention given. And they are new to this. He's probably <laughs> not used to having somebody in his space. During mm -hmm. work he's hour. in work zone. Yes. So I can see both sides. I just want to make sure 
if we're putting out why Jimmy's right, we're also putting out there why Chelsea is right. And y'all let us know in the comments. Yeah. <laughs> what side y'all are, they're probably going to be like, neither one of them. Get both of them off. I know. Get them off, off both off our screens. I agree. I'm I'm exhausted from yeah. both of them. I can't well, take I would, the whining anymore. I would never say, yeah, I could I could have taken a breather from the sex too. That was rude. <laughs> I, I will say, I think him calling out the sex part was because she was saying like, oh, I cooked you dinner. I watched your show and I had made love to you. He's like, yeah. I'm not saying he should have said it, but I think the way she was presenting it was like, oh, I was giving this thing to you. But if you had an issue with his lack of affection all day, hmm. I don't know. It's he, he may be thinking, okay, if you were upset with me about this, is it coming out of left field? Hmm. That's why we need to know the timeline of the day. Okay. And and I and Chelsea, I I'll give you one. If it happened later, then I'm wrong. But if y'all, if it goes, he goes to work. He's been at work mm -hmm. before the friends came. Y'all did whatever. Then he came back down. Now the friends are gone. Now y'all are talking. And now you hit him with, oh, you didn't kiss me at all today. He's like, well, y'all were intimate today, right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, girl. Maybe they didn't kiss during their time. <laughs> oh, that's a bigger <laughs> You don't know. Like, if they did all that and she still is like, you didn't kiss me one time today, then... No, we're moving on. <laughs> we're getting too much in the detail. <laughs> it's the details we don't know. <laughs> Get out of one and speculating. <laughs> okay. Clay and A D. He has okay. such a cute house. He does. I said, okay, Clay, I'm proud of him. <laughs> yeah, moving ready for family. Okay. He said family ready. Mm-hmm. So he has a vision board, which I guess she has too. That must be something they talked about because they bonded over it. He has mm -hmm. a silk pillowcase. Mm -hmm. Protect the curls. Okay, so he's he's prepared. And she says, I'm glad I don't see a woman's touch, which it did look very masculine to me. Yeah, yeah, it gave the bachelor, yeah. Yeah, for sure. But but cute. It was very mm -hmm. cute. Yeah, and it was clean. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, okay, his business must really be doing well. Because you know when mm -hmm. they say entrepreneur. She's like, I can see myself living here, cooking breakfast. He's like, listen, I got everything set up, ready. If you want, you could just move in. I'm already taking care of the mortgage. Do you think he likes thing. her? Mm, I think he he likes her. I'm I've shifted initially. I wasn't sure because initially the compliments took way too long for me. Mm -hmm. The first episode or at the reveal. I'm sorry. Now I'm like, he he does seem like he's into her. He seems nervous and anxious about what his behavior will be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um if anything, he seems I don't maybe not more interested, but I I get a bit more reserve energy from her now mm -hmm. versus him. He seems okay. very excited about merging their lives. And she's just like, okay, cool. I'm here. <laughs> Which I kind of like. But mm -hmm. yeah, I, I think he's really liking her. Mm -hmm. I think there are a couple who we're not going to see all their issues on camera. I think they'll be more private than we expect. Girl, you know not to ever get your hopes up for these people. I, I just... We don't know too much about their situation now. It it seems to me the other couples are just letting it all hang out on camera. They don't seem to be. Mm -mm. Yeah, we didn't see AD's place. We just found out kind of what she does uh, in the next episode. So, yeah. 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 Okay. okay. He talked about kids several times. So I think that's something that he really wants. And mm -hmm. AD better not have his child. <laughs> until we see what his behavior until he has a good track record girl you 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 might need to uh go and talk to johnny's ex-girlfriends who are on the birth control so that you could get taken care of but mm -hmm. yeah uh it is nice to hear that he wants kids and it seems like maybe he would want to right some of the wrongs that he feels his dad did or mm -hmm. whatever but it was nice to hear him say that that's something that he wants and to hear that he's preparing his life for that Yep. That's all I have on them for this episode. It wasn't much. Yep, that's it. That's all I had.
All right, Jeremy and Laura, we see Jeremy's place first and mm -hmm. uh, it looked nice. It was very clean. Very. Yeah. Yep. Um, we saw the the robot cleaning things going, the robot vacuums going. Uh, mm -hmm. I said, how are y'all so clean? But y'all put y'all shoes in the bed. <laughs> Something also, so while his place was very clean, very well put together, I, know what you're gonna um, say. I asked, who who helped you with the pieces? Was it your mom or your ex? I knew you were going to say that. I, I get with the OCD and being clean and the labels and all that, but... Can I say I hate them saying OCD? Because like I, I feel like people use... It's just too loose. You are you are tidy. You don't have OCD unless someone has diagnosed you with that. Yeah. Well, that's how he described it, it himself. Is. But um, some of the choices in the house... I'm just wondering, like, okay, was this an ex? When was the ex there? Very nice place. That's all. <laughs> Beautiful gowns. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. She seemed impressed by it, too. And that's mm -hmm. that. Did they show her place? I don't have... Mm -mm. I don't I don't think so. Okay. No. All right. Now, okay. do, do we want to get through Amy and Johnny so that we can end with Ken and Brittany? Because... Yeah, let's get through Amy Johnny because I don't feel like there's too much other than they go to her place. Yeah, she's a crystal girl. Yeah, which he's he like, oh, I heard about crystal funny. girls. Right. What? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so they're both financially ready for the next steps. Mm -hmm. He wants to live a frugal life and she's mm -hmm. more like, things aren't promised mm -hmm. to you, which I completely, I completely get where both of them are coming from. He wants to retire early, but who's to say you know, at 50, you don't have some type of illness. So I would hate to get to 50, having not mm -hmm. enjoyed the money that we do have just because we're waiting for retirement at 50. So yeah, they got to find the right balance. They do. Like, yeah. uh, and then they talked about very calmly the reasons for birth control, why he oh, wanted but Before you get to that, so he was talking about the being fin financially secure before kids. Mm -hmm. Um, he feels very passionate, which I think is good, but I think his energy was a bit much on that. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. I think just like so early on, like oh, the diapers, it just like I agree a thousand percent. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I think with conversations like that, you may want to approach him with a bit more care. And a bit softer, I think. Because he doesn't he, really know her like that just yet. He has his plan figured out. And he has to be careful not to be that person who is just looking for somebody to dump into his plan. He right. Exactly. It. Because you went on Love is Blind. He too has a life and a plan. And you guys are going to have to merge it. It's not just you're retired at 50 and she's you know, just going to take that on. And that's her life mission now. It doesn't work. Exactly. Like even the timing. So I don't know. I just wrote that. I think he needs to chill, <laughs> chill just a little bit. Yeah. Just a little bit. Yeah. I, I think since he's so passionate about not having kids, mm -hmm. I would be content with him taking matters into his own hands. I understand the vasectomy is a procedure, but he is so passionate about it that I hope that passion doesn't lead her to feel forced into making mm -hmm. a decision she doesn't want to. It seems like he wants kids less than, or right now, less than she would want kids. Like she seems like, okay, in a year or so I'm open. He seems like a year, two years, three years, I'm not ready. Mm -hmm. So in that case, I think it's only fair for him to take matters into his own hands get the vasectomy so that they can ensure that they can enjoy themselves and not have kids vacation by themselves and not have kids instead of trying to convince her to, it just felt like he was trying to convince her a little too much for me. Yeah. I think these are conversations that need to come to a mutual agreement. He can't expect her to get all on board with his plan. Um, I think for her, for me, the a red flag would be even if she was okay with like, oh, 
maybe it happens, you know, I wouldn't feel comfortable being with, you know, even having the possibility of a oops with someone who's so adamant about no. <laughs> like for me, that would be a huge red flag. So True. I don't know, no matter which way it goes, mm -hmm. if I were her, even if he, if he was so adamant and then out of the blue, he's like, all right, fine, we'll risk it. Then I don't know if I could trust you and what your emotions and feelings will be. If there is a oops, can you be trusted? <laughs> I don't, you don't know this man. And then on um, his side, I think, well, I'm just say to sum it up, both of them, I think, need to go get educated on their options, period. Mm -hmm. Because I think he is uneducated, maybe just thinking, oh, everyone's on it. He doesn't know the effects of this or that, whatever. Um, I think on her part, bringing up the vasectomy as like, a temporary few years thing sounds a bit uneducated too. Um, so I think both of them need to go get educated on what the options are. And I don't, I'm not saying that she should, or he should, yeah. I think they both should just get more information before you have such like a strong stance. Cause I sense maybe just a lack of knowledge on hmm. both parts in this whole conversation um so okay fair um so I think that's the only major thing that they talked about so mm -hmm. we'll probably move on to now Brittany and Ken and then we'll end on Laura and uh Jessica's conversation yeah all right so they go to uh, Ken's house and the refrigerator has nothing in there except some some meat from Aldi because Aldi carries that brand that he had in there. <laughs> I know because they have the two of uh, the two packs of deli meat in one mm -hmm. container, and it's very yeah. So he has the meat, and that's it. He needs some food. And as a black person during Black History Month, I must say I am so ashamed of his spice cabinet. Ain't no spices. No, no garlic. No onion powder. Paprika. <laughs> but he had like this random thing of apple cider vinegar. <laughs> I was just like you can tell he does not cook. He mm -mm. does not cook. Because his freezer was empty as well. No frozen vegetables? No canned goods? Well, he had it looked like chips and stuff in the cabinet. And she goes, Oh, that's a little better, isn't it? Is it better? I don't know. Mm -hmm. That 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 was strange to me. Dreadful. Dreadful. I mean, did did your mama, grandmama, siblings come visit ever and be like, "Where's the?" Maybe they all live he goes, in Charlotte. He goes so. to their house. Yeah, so he goes to their house. Family. We'll give you a pass. Yeah. No, mm -hmm. we won't give you a pass. But <laughs> <laughs> two two spices and <laughs> bro, that is embarrassing. All right, so Brittany starts to talk about how she's feeling the distance between them. I thought they had a good conversation about it at first, like her feeling like since they've mm -hmm. been back, he's been distant, he's been in his phone. I think it's an interesting balance to strike with someone who is bubbly and talkative, potentially mm -hmm. introverted, and someone who really doesn't need all that noise. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they they I put that they had their work cut out for them and Kenneth please put that phone down yeah is he really working at this point no it seems he's just he's just someone who likes his phone because even when they first moved back he said in his mm -hmm. confessional I'm so glad to have my phone back I'm so glad to have it back in my hands yeah she says she knows she can overanalyze but I don't think she's overanalyzing Oh, she definitely is. <laughs> she definitely isn't. But he did later on make her feel that way. Um, I felt like they just needed to get on the same page. So he hadn't been home much. And know, there's something about Brittany. I think I know what it is. But there's something about Brittany that makes Ken feel like he has to set the record straight. Like whenever she's starting a narrative, he feels like, okay, hold on. Before we go too far down this road, let's just say, like, oh, you haven't been home much, okay? I went and got my hair done, and then I met up with my mentor, and I came back home. Like, it's not that I don't ever come home. It was one day that I went and did those things, and that's why I wasn't home. So it something about her makes him think he has to set the record straight every time. 
Yeah. Especially for things that aren't on film. Yeah. And it's hard because it's like, okay, how many days was it just one day? Was it? What did she say? He's, she said, you seem super relaxed and peaceful on the honeymoon. And now you seem distant. He asked for grace and that these moments won't be used against him. Um, he's ready just to do normal life. But the thing is, she doesn't know you outside of this. So whatever you're presenting to her now is how she has to assume you are. And so, yeah, there's grace. You don't want to be judged just by one single moment, but she only has a handful of moments to judge you on. She she can only judge you by what she has. I, I think it's snowballing in that it's when you're with her, there's a lack of interest. Um, and I think when he's away, it's like he's checking in just to check a box. Mm -hmm. And then I think it's confirmed in a roundabout way when he all but says like, oh, well, th it's a problem for you, not for me. And I wondered if that was true. So he talks about how he is interested in her. And when he came home, he was trying to be intimate with her and trying to cuddle and stuff like that. But if you come home at 1 a.m., and I have to be up at 5 a.m. I I'm sorry, don't wake me up. Like who who is who wants the cuddles? You know that song Cater to You by Destiny Child? Mm -hmm. When Kelly Rowland's like, if you come home late, tap me on my shoulder, I'll roll mm -hmm. over. Don't tap me. I don't sing that part. <laughs> if you come home late, text me when you make it home. So when I wake up before you, I, I can see. I'm like, oh, okay. Or if I wake up before you get home, I know, oh, okay, you're on your way. Don't tap me. <laughs> not. Nah. And so he seems surprised that, or he seemed to be using that moment against her. But to me, that's not a fair moment. If Unless I there were other examples. And that's what I wrote. Was there another time? Because he claims after she, she says, oh, you know, where's the desire and the deep crave for something mm -hmm. more in this marriage? He says, I try to be affectionate with you, but you don't always reciprocate. Like I've tried to kiss you and you just go on about your business. Mm -hmm. So I need more specifics on, on that. And but as far as her sleeping, no. That's that's unequivocal. That's not the time to, to be tapping her. Uh, I put down before the end of this scene, I said, I think they could benefit from a schedule. So at such and such time, let's put the phones away and just have us time. Let's watch a movie, talk about our day. You remember when he started the nightly check-in? I, mm -hmm. I wonder if he's done a nightly check-in since then. Mm -mm, he been he on his phone. Me. So yeah, I, I think if they have a schedule, at this time, we put the phones up, then that meets her needs of, I want us to have the time together. It meets his need of, I want us to have the time together. And, you know, he can have his phone time the rest of the hours. So mm -hmm. I think a schedule would have done them good if they were both interested. But it's more than that. She says they don't kiss out, kiss, don't make out, wants to be affectionate, wants to at least feel a little temptation, even though... Way. they're not gonna go all the way so I think it's more than just the time together I think there could be time there but he's just coming across as not really interested in her like that which we know and that's the thing he tried to I hate it that he tried to put this on her so maybe it's not there for you and if that's what you're saying to me then you know that's something we can deal with but he he feels he felt defensive in that moment to me yeah, it's it's your problem. It, it, what I'm hearing from you is that you're the man. I'm the man for you, but you're not feeling me fully. Now, we both know that that's not what she, not said. What she said. Yeah, it seemed like she just wanted to know that you want her. And a woman knows when it's not there. A woman knows when you don't see it for her. Even when she was, <laughs> when she was crying... He literally just sat there with his arms folded, with his hands folded. Prayer hands like Pastor Jamal Bryant. You, you didn't want to go and hug her and say it's okay. You don't. <laughs> I <was> just, um, <laughs> like I know you this know girl that was me. crying a river. She she had to dab her face with paper towel and the whole night. And he's just there unaffected, just looking at her. And so <laughs> I felt, what? Then he follows it up with, what God has for me. I'm sorry. What God has. 
it is for me. <laughs> I know. Yeah. If you haven't subscribed, as you see, we have amazing vocals on this. <laughs> Samara is actually the singer out of us, too. I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, it's like, you know, I, I, I've resolved that. You know, if God has it for me, then it's going to happen. And if it doesn't happen, that means God didn't have it for me. Because she wants affection. <laughs> like, that's the response. He said, God got me, boo. <laughs> I don't know about you. And God's probably like, why am I in this? <laughs> I literally wrote WWJD Kenneth. Right? <laughs> he, uh, he was so cold in that moment. Um he didn't give her a hug. He didn't reach it. And then when she finally, <laughs> when she finally dries all her tears, he goes, so he's on his phone and then he puts oh, it yeah. down and goes, this is not going to work out. <laughs> and so I think we should go our separate or whatever he says. And then give me a hug. So, you know, it's no beef. What is that? So to this girl was counting down the days till her celibacy journey was over. And that's how you break up with her. Give me a hug so you know it's no beef. So, so we all good. And then he calls Amber. Who Is Amber the, the female friend he mentioned who would have questions for him about dating a non- I thought it was a guy he called. I thought it, I thought I thought I heard Amber or something. Like oh that. yeah he yeah he goes back upstairs and he's like yeah I'm headed over which tells me he never really unpacked that we saw. He seemed uninterested. Yeah. Wherever he was, because the timeline also didn't make sense to me either. Mm -hmm. Those twists you had didn't take all day. You said you got your hair done in the morning. Then you went and had lunch with your mentor. Where were you at from 2 p.m. to 1.30 a.m.? What's that? Uh, what's that song by Whitney Houston where she's breaking down? Where 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 um four of y'all had dinner and two of y'all were mighty cheap because <laughs> the credit card receipt only had two people. It's not right, but it's okay. That's the song. <laughs> That's what you just sounded like. Like where were you between? Seriously, you? it's not adding up. Something tells me you've been hanging out at this friend's house who you called because why are they awake and Here just ready to be like, oh yeah, I'll come over? No, exactly. And. <sighs> You disappointed me. Exactly. Um, okay. So they broke up. And then let's end that episode with Jessica and Laura's conversation, which I thought was so odd. Uh, first, Jessica, why are you keeping your daughter, 10-year-old daughter, abreast on way too many details? It's, it's way too much. It's way <laughs> too much. It's way too much. What did you think about Laura's reaction to to Jessica pretty much wanting Jimmy? I'm like, is this how women search for men these days? Um, I don't know. Jessica is still hard to read. I don't know if she's for real or not. Um, she said she claimed she wouldn't care how he looked. It feels like a competition at this point because of what she said later, like, oh, well, you know how men are. And she said she, she still has questions, would want to have a conversation. So it seems like a competition, even though she's like, oh, yeah, Chelsea's beautiful. And yeah, I don't buy. I, I, don't, I don't buy it either. And wh why do you even want this man thinking about you? He didn't choose you. He chose her. You should be like, have enough self-respect that you're done with him. At this point, it's not a game anymore. Someone put in uh, our last video's comments. I think they just did this mm -hmm. yesterday, but they said Jessica's there for tv she's not there mm. she's not there to find a match and so like stop checking to see if he's in love with with her I, I just cut it out and the even the way laura said it oh you saw him so you're not repulsed by him the shade absolutely absolutely mm. uh so sarah ann dm'd jeremy oh like, before that what? jessica says that jimmy sent a friend request to her and then took it back. So Jimmy, once again, goofball. Like, Whatever progress you thought you were going to make with Chelsea, gone. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I I feel icky about these women shooting their shot at people who didn't choose them, or mm -hmm. or wanting to still be involved with people who didn't choose them. 
I think that's terrible for TV. Like I want someone who is like, okay, you didn't choose me. Okay, my life goes on. Mm-hmm. Type of thing. All right. Um, and then we can switch, I guess, to episode nine, which was the final one. All right. So this one starts with Chelsea and Jimmy. Mm-hmm. Every episode starts out with them. Uh, so they're talking about how leaving wasn't cool. So I guess she said she was going to leave. <laughs> she said she was going to leave. And then uh, he ended up leaving. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing. I think she just said that because she thought it would hurt him. Mm. <laughs> but then he was like, okay, if you're going to hurt me, I got one better. And I'm going to actually leave. Period. Yeah. Mm, I don't know. And, and yeah. I, if I were Chelsea, when he came back, I would have let him lead that conversation. So you left and now you're back. What exactly do you want to fix? What exactly are we going to do differently? But instead, she was just talking, 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 talking. And it almost made me feel like, okay, this is why he doesn't like you. Like, you don't give him a chance to not, I don't want to say give him a chance to like you, but you're too available to him. And he said, yeah, you asked me like five times that day if I was okay. And I felt smothered. And I'm like, oh, That'll based do off it. how that conversation went. Yeah. And I also wrote, Chelsea, what's the point of being in this cycle of he messes up, mm-hmm. you start crying and whining, mm-hmm. and then he doesn't really have to do or say much. It's just, you're like, okay, let's pick up where we left off. Exactly. What's the, what's the point of all this? That's why I think I'm tired of the whining because we know where it leads at this point. Mm-hmm. You'll be fine by tomorrow. <laughs> she needs to She needs to disappear for a little bit and let him miss her before they reconvene yeah (laughs) that's what I think I don't mind her being offended by him saying she's clingy I think he could have just said I felt smothered Mm -hmm. the way he said it when he came back but yeah she she definitely needs to to chill a little bit a lot of it uh I think Jimmy is Mr. I'm sorry and I love you like he (laughs) he, I'm sorry and I love you he says that every time like it makes things better like okay he just always looks confused too like he's just searching looking for the right things to say Mm -hmm. so what did you think about her meeting up with jimmy's friends the two girls the two women yeah i think it went fine they seemed excited to meet with her uh they asked how do you know you're ready to be married again because they find out for the first time that this is her second Mm -hmm. soon to be marriage um she says that she's matured and healed a lot since her first marriage she was probably insufferable (laughs) <laughs> oh you don't think she has i don't know what the maybe she has in certain regards okay fair i think maybe maybe this um insecurity and in the way she's navigating this relationship which his behavior doesn't help i i agree is um maybe it's a newer thing um but yeah i, I think it went fine with them and then also in that meeting um they asked, like, how do you feel about him having female friends? She says she doesn't mind, mm-hmm. but she has dated other men who've had female best friends and they've messed around. But then she says her best, her best friend is her ex-boyfriend. Yeah, I, I don't get that. I don't I don't think anything is going on with her and the, the male best friend. He might be interested in her still, but I don't think she's interested in him. Yeah. I will say in this meeting, I felt like Chelsea talked too much. Again, I think she talks too much. And Mm. she needs to be quiet for a little bit and just observe Jimmy, give him the opportunity to rise to the occasion and start off conversations. Because there was even a moment where she was explaining a story to the friends or the whole not initiating sex, which I don't Mm. think his closest friends needed to hear that, but that's just me. Uh, But she goes, maybe he should explain it. And then like 2.3 seconds later, no, I'll explain it. I'll explain it. Girl, are you going to be the only one talking? Are you the only one on the agenda today? It's too much. Yeah. It's and then something much. the friend said about how he basically will mold to who he's with yes. and what's in front of him. Mm-hmm. And if I were her, um, 
that would have made me feel confident based off of everything else I've been seeing. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, is he just telling me what I want to hear to make me happy for right now because he's interested? I don't know. I said, was like, mm. now granted, they don't know everything that's been happening, mm-hmm. but no, they were honest. Yeah, it, I just think they don't need to know everything about their life. She was telling them every single detail. And I get they were very warm and inviting women, but they're still his friends. So don't get too comfortable. Uh, Mm -hmm. The friends noticed that she really likes him. They didn't say anything about him seeming into her, but maybe they just didn't think to. And she's the one who they came to check out. So maybe that's why, Mm -hmm. but yeah, it is very obvious that she's into him. Yep. That's all I have. All right. Should we do Amy and Johnny again? Not too much on them, but they have the dance lessons. The the dance lessons. That was cute. Um, I love his family though. His sister's. Mm -hmm. Really His sisters fun. look like carbon copies. Right? The parents said, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. <laughs> they all look alike, mm-hmm. but they had such a good energy. They really liked Amy, which mm-hmm. she seems likable to me. Yeah. We don't see her much on our screens, but she seems very likable. It was just a, a good meeting. Yeah. I think that was the best family meeting we had. Really? I'm biased. Oh, I like who Clay's did you think mom. was better? I liked Clay's mom. Oh, I love Clay's mom. I just don't think yeah. the meeting went as smoothly as... Oh, well, yeah, because he... Yeah, him. Because yes. <laughs> of him, <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, should we... Let's do Jeremy and Laura. No, let's end on Jeremy and Laura. Laura. <laughs> okay. All right, so AD and Clay, so his mom and his, his sister is very pretty. Mm-hmm. His mom's gorgeous very sweet people i know they bought her flowers yeah yeah i liked that for ad i mm-hmm. it's really important to feel received into the family that you're joining so i love that for her and for amy too yeah um, huge okay. difference so clay for the most part at the beginning clay was just minding his business he saw the women mm-hmm. relating to each other and he knew not to say a word not to get involved in women's business <laughs> He was just there vibing, listening to them, nodding his head. Mm-hmm. Why is his mom giving AD her shawl when he got that big old jacket on? <laughs> Why? I don't know. But it was a sweet gesture. It was, but she goes, yeah, I'm kind of cold. He's like, oh, you cold? Dang. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you cold? Oh, my. Dang, that sucks. Wish I could help you with this big old jacket I have on that I've been wearing the whole time, but you know. What, what did I tell you, Mr. 50%? Right, I know. <laughs> okay, so now they get into this conversation where I guess he isn't coming home certain days of the week. He's staying at his place. Yeah, the mom asked about their work hours. What, what has that been like? AD says she's still getting the hang of his schedule. He's choosing convenience over coming back to the apartment, which she's like, oh, I get it some days, but it would be nice to have more time together. Mm-hmm. He's like, hold up now. <laughs> you don't feel like we we have a good time when we chilling and we laughing and we watching shows and we, da da da, da. <laughs> He had energy. Yeah. I don't know. What do you think about that? I think, I think he, he should relax a little bit. Um, I get what he's saying. He's used to operating where it's just his business and him. And so each of them will have to adjust to having a partner. I imagine that when she does the nightclub thing, she Mm -hmm. will have to adjust because now she has a partner at home. So it might take more communication. It might take, okay, I'm not working as many nights or whatever the case might be. But I think he does need to find the balance of, I can still be a thriving businessman and showing up at places and handling things while I'm catering to my wife's need to have me in the bed. Or how about saying to her, okay, I have to sleep over here because I have to be somewhere on this part of town. Why don't you come to my place and we can spend the night here instead? Like give her Bring options. Her with her, yeah. Yeah, with, give with her options too. to show. It's not that I don't want to be with you. It's just the convenience of being close mm-hmm. to the location then she'll yeah. see what he wanted but he I think he be- had valid points I do think he could bring her with him because it doesn't sound like she's been up to anything that she has to be committed to since they've been back mm-hmm. uh it sounds also like he's just like okay 
it's a an unusual time where you're off completely. But had you been working, if you're getting home at 3 a.m., I'm up at five, like we would be passing each other. So I think his perspective was, this is unique. It's not always going to be like this. And you, this seems like a problem because you're off work exactly. and I'm working. But when you don't have a, avail- if you didn't have availability, would you be complaining about this? I think the advice the mom gave was good. Mm-hmm. If when you love someone, you'll find the time, you'll make it work, you'll meet in the middle. I and think I it's normal to have to adjust. For um, sure. And you know, everything he's saying is valid. You know, I think he had a little too much energy with his Oh, yeah. Family, as always. But he's it's like, what's weird. the problem? <laughs> right. And she said, whoa. <laughs> I love AD. He's like, you're not going to talk to me any kind of way. Like, I'm not going to be. And all- his mom was like, I'm going to just drink my water. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think it's valid for him to say, well, she doesn't understand because that's not what she's doing. It seems like he really wants to be understood, but she can understand what you're saying and still disagree with you. And I think that's what was going on. I understand you have to work. Like she said, I will never not want you to work. I just want to make sure we're prioritizing us. They they could also benefit from a schedule. Since um since my advice isn't gonna work for Ken and Brittany because he ended that that relationship in 3.5 seconds, I'll take my advice and give it to A D and Clay. Y'all need a schedule. Which he did he did uh kind of initiate that. He's like, okay, well w- really it's two days a week. Yeah. Where I may need to have some flexibility and where I'm staying just so it's a bit mm-hmm. convenient for me. So he did offer that up like okay well going forward, we could agree to how many days per week and what that would look like, yes. as well as trying to, you know, insert your schedule mm-hmm. into what we have going on as well. Because it's not just the nightclub stuff for her. It's also the real estate, real estate stuff thing. as well. So I could I could see both sides. Um, sure. Y'all are both in y'all high earning years. And mm-hmm. it's, it's always going to be a challenge to try to find that time. It's just your 30s and your 40s. It is what it is. I hope they can find a balance. I, I like them as individuals and I want to like them as a couple, just not a married couple. <laughs> I don't know. They, she might say yes. I don't know. I'm worried about him saying yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. So let's talk about Laura and Jeremy. We'll start from the beginning and then go to the end because it ended on a note. <laughs> Listen. Okay, so they start off where they're in the kitchen, I guess, getting ready for her parents to come. Mm-hmm. She made the whole, of course, I know this, Who? which one of us has a college degree? I think she should never make that joke ever again. I think it's elitist and it needs to, yeah, don't do that. She's got a lot going on. Um... Because she thinks she's better than him. She thinks she has better fashion sense. She thinks because she got her college because she went to school and got her degree. <laughs> she thinks she's a little better than him. She, I think she also maybe thinks she's better or could potentially have a better marriage than her parents, which we don't know their marriage from a can of paint, but I didn't appreciate the way she talked about her parents' marriage. Like, yeah, they've been together for 40 years and it's okay, but you know, I just, I need more spice and fun and It's just their marriage isn't what I want, which their marriage could be trash. I don't know that. (laughs) However, girl, these are your parents and these people look to be in their 70s. And it's like, come on. I mean, things will look different at different stages of life. And as a child, you'll you if you know all the intricacies of your parents marriage and exactly what it is, I don't think that that's appropriate. So I don't know if you will fully ever know what your parents' marriage is or isn't. I just didn't care for the way she referred to it. Yeah, I don't care for anything she does. I don't care for the way she talks. I don't care for her being on my screen. If it's not, because they're still together, even if the marriage isn't whatever, why did you have to say it like that? Clay saying what he said was terrible, but at least his mom got a divorce. You know, it was facts. You went on the infidelity trip. Yeah. And now they're broken up. Like if they were still together and he said that, I, I would look at him sideways too. But I, I don't care much for her. And why would she bring up the love triangle to her parents? It felt Those, so those people awful. was looking so confused. Like, do you want them to like him? I don't 
think she wants them to like him. Uh, and then for her to say, you know, I'm over it. No, you're not. Because had you been over it, you would not have brought it up. And then the whole, oh yeah, he don't, he he liked, he hearted her thing. He didn't even respond to it. He hearted it, which maybe he hearted it. Maybe he did respond and showed it to you after he had sent a response. He could have deleted those messages. You don't know, but yeah. Um, anyway, um, the whole parent meeting I felt was weird. This was my least favorite. Yeah, the parents just seemed like, okay. Mm -hmm. Even in all the banter they were having back and forth, the confessional scene with the parents, yes. when the dad was like, you know, if you put her on a pedestal, she'll walk all over you. That, even that made me uncomfortable for a dad to say. I don't know. The mom, she, she, the mom calls her out for how they talk to each other, saying, you know, all this banter, someone could get offended. I don't know if it's in jest or if those are things that they mean. And I grew with mama. They're not, it's not just in jest. It's too much. They mean some of that. It, I think she talked way too much about her icks and the pros and cons. This is their first time meeting him. And just because you're comfortable with your family, that doesn't mean this person is comfortable with your family. So you have to, and that's something I had to learn. Like, you know, just cause I, I know the types of jokes this person likes. That doesn't mean I can put my partner in awkward situations where I'm making these jokes and he just met these people. Right. So she has to, she has to find some type of balance. And for someone who wants to have the fire, the passion, the fun in a marriage, you think you're going to have that by talking about this man's wardrobe? What is her obsession with these shirts? Was it her sister or was it a friend? I thought it was her sister or sister-in-law. Sister. Sister. Whoever the woman was was trying to talk some sense into her. Sister. Yeah. Like, it's a shirt, girl. We ain't seen him in Hawaiian shirts yet. I don't know if that's just because he's back at home and mm -hmm. he doesn't wear them when he's at home. Or she's been on him about not wearing them. It's weird. Did, sorry, did the, the dad's comment about if you make her a princess, did it not bother you for her father to say? I think it bothered me. I think they're used to her running over them. <laughs> running over them, used to her being a problem. You know what it reminded me of? Uh, Married at First Sight Boston. Um, the white Lindsay lady dad. with the Lindsay? Yeah. The way Lindsay's dad kept being like, she's, she's, she's uh, a lot. She's a lot. She, you know, she'll take off. She's this, she's that, you know? So I wasn't here for it, but from what I've seen of her behavior, it, <laughs> he, <laughs> the dad just seemed over it. Just yeah. like, why you got me on it with all these cameras in front of these people. But mm -hmm. I love that the the mom picked up on how they talk to each other because I didn't I didn't love it either. Like there's a fun banter banter where like oh they love each other. Look at them making fun of each other. You know it's like oh you got a big head you got a big head that type of banter. But there were actual insults going back and forth. Like and I could see him joking way too much and hurting her feelings. Like uh, married at first sight um, Nashville with Clint and Gina. You know, just being too harsh too soon. It's a different scenario a bit, but I can see it just going left and her being in her feelings about it. So mm -hmm. absolutely. Uh okay. So then the <laughs> the end of the episode, Laura comes downstairs with all this energy. I wish I had some shades. <laughs> <laughs> Go grab them. I'll pause the recording. <laughs> <laughs> pause it. Pause it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay so laura comes down with her energy and she's like are you gonna sit there with your sunglasses inside <laughs> yo why does laura laura talk to him like he's her child no respect and in this moment, I understand that she meant all the disrespect in the world, but she talks to him like that on a regular basis. <laughs> He's like, if I put these shades on, it's like an invisible cloak. Right. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> she won't see me. <laughs> oh, gosh. She came down like he was grounded or something. She was the mom. Like, so what do you have to say for yourself? And then the next thing you know, she's yelling. 
because he left at 10 10 45 mm-hmm. and which i think is a really late time to leave your house but of course i would think that um yeah. you, you're only going to the bar I and think. he comes five in the morning apparently the bars in north carolina or where they are in north carolina um the bars close at 2 a.m mm-hmm. so he finally he just sits there and lets her do her rah-rah and then he finally starts to explain look i was going to a karaoke bar but then they told me the location changed and then I got another text saying Sarah would be there. So I almost decided not to go. But then I thought, why am I going to let someone get in the way of my experience? I don't even know her like that. So I decided to go. I see her there. She comes up to me, gives me a hug, and then just walks away. And so I decide so that there's no bad beef going <laughs> forward, I should just have a conversation with her. so weak why would you think like his whole thought process was flawed till 5 a.m but i shared my location and that's like he had he sent her the location but i guess he didn't expect her to look at it and she played she did play it really well i must say oh she she sat there quieter than i would i mean clearly y'all see how we run our mouths (laughs) right but um his whole thought process so you thought about turning back around and you were like okay maybe i should go because she can't ruin my experience now i get you've already gotten dressed you're on your way out i understand not going back home i i would have preferred that but he decides to go anyway Mm -hmm. she hugs him and walks away as she should why is she why is she staying to have conversation with you and when you broke up with her in the pods, you should have known I broke up with her in the pods and that's the end of me and her. There's no need for closure conversations, Izzy. Remember how he was going around last season having closure conversations that no, none of the women cared about, only he did? Why do you need a closure conversation? It seems like it was for him more than it was for her. You know why she's mad at you. She wanted to get chosen, you didn't choose her. And if that's what makes her mad, she's just going to have to be mad because you you chose who you wanted. And you claim you didn't have, because she asked for feedback. You claim that, oh, I don't have a reason or any bad feedback to give. So what else is there? Yeah. So he proved to be a poor decision maker. Period. And a bad liar. <laughs> yeah. I don't know which one was worse. He was a, he was a worse liar than- don't, a- don't ever commit no crimes because- <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely not he's he mm-hmm. tried to present it like he was doing the right thing by having the conversation but to hang out until 5 a.m is wild oh yeah we stood outside talking until 5 a.m i told you where i was i sent you my location he was way too nonchalant too like he didn't expect scary. her to go check it like she said oh i was asleep that's scary he was so nonchalant like he really didn't do anything you think Jeremy really want her like that? No, but also, no. I, if I were Laura, I would pack my bags and leave. I can't deal with a man that nonchalant. I couldn't handle it. I know myself. I, I'm i here showing you all this emotion, and you're just like, I can't. To me, it. when he decided to stay out and talk with her mm-hmm. that late, he made his decision on not wanting her. Very true. Yeah. Very true. Now, if she, if she's gonna take the clue and dr- or drag it out, I don't know. But she doesn't want him like that, so I don't even understand mm-hmm. all the the anger. Maybe because she she feels like she looks stupid on TV. But how does she know um, that it's near him. Sarah's house? I oh. guess they talk. People talk. You know the cat. Maybe she they- probably was like oh do you know what side of town she lives on because she said uptown she gave a specific place mm-hmm. and was like oh that's near sarah's place mm-hmm. you know they they also were in the pots together so people talk about where they oh live. where do you live that's yeah that's true and they did hug it out so that was the other thing you remember when jeremy broke up with sarah and mm-hmm. and she's like okay but when she got in front of laura they hugged it out oh girl you know it's you it's not me 
everything seemed cool. It didn't seem cool to me. She said, well, I'll have my day. Well, no, when she was in front of her, it seemed cool. But then when she, she said the whole, oh, I'll have my day. Mm-hmm. That was kind of after they had hugged it out. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, it is what it is. So just I, messy. I always felt like Sarah Ann had it out for her. Cause I think she felt like Laura was trying to gloat a little bit. Um, and she knew I she it felt vindictive to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I always good. expected this from Sarah Ann. I'm not surprised she reached out. I'm not surprised. She and Jessica are the same person, which why is Laura so mad at Sarah Ann or about the Sarah Ann situation when she was there cackling with Jessica about Jessica wanting to do the same thing? I don't get it. What is with these people? Is this how women are today? Apparently. <laughs> is this how people interact? Apparently. I feel like this, this, it's just very messy. It is messy. Very, very messy. Yeah. And yeah, when he got caught, the fact that he said, I don't want to talk about it at this moment. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> what? Ooh. Uh, low key, Jeremy and uh, Laura deserve each other. <laughs> They, they both nuts have like she says like to say x yes. that I could identify in both of them and how they're handling things so absolutely yeah all right. all right so we'll be back next week you guys let us know what you thought in the comments uh and we'll be responding and reading them uh feel free to disagree with us we cannot wait to see and hopefully the next week brings us some good mm-hmm. juicy episodes all right. all right bye bye